Hello everyone, testing in and welcome to you to the session 8 of the manual testing course. Today our agenda is to do bug reporting and tracking. What we are going to do today is we are going to talk about what is a bug, what is the definition of a bug, then bug life cycle we are going to talk about what are the various phases in the bug life cycle that is the bug raising process. After that we are going to talk about bug reporting and tracking that Whenever you get some bug, how you are going to intimate the developer about it? How you are going to report the bug to the developer? After that, whatever the communication takes place between you and the developer, that is known as bug tracking, which we are going to talk about. Last is severity and priority. We are going to talk about and I am going to give you a lot of real-time scenarios related to uh, the severity and priority, different combinations for the severity and priority. Okay, let's start up. Let me open up Notepad. Bug reporting and tracking. What is a bug? Whenever you have to do regression testing, in regression testing, you cover up two things. One is whether it has fixed the bug or not. Second thing is, the bug uh, should not affect the functionality which was working fine earlier. Whenever you are asked to do regression testing, you test the application for two things. First is, error has been fixed or not. Second is, it should not Effect the functionality which was working fine earlier, which was working fine earlier. These are the two things we test in the regression test. When in the regression testing, the expected value is not equal to the actual value. The actual output which you are getting is not as per the expectation, is not as per the requirement, is not as per the SRS. That is of the requirement specification. We have discussed out that many times. So at that time it means there is some problem in the application. It means there is some bug. So it's your duty to report it as a bug to the developer. You have to intimate this to the developer. That is known as bug reporting. That is reporting the bug to the developer. That is the actual output are not equal to expected output, then it means there is a bug. You can call it bug, you can call it defect, you can call it error or you can call it change request. There are different names you can do. Now, let's move ahead that when the actual output not equal to expected output, there is a bug. Yeah, and developer has to be intimated about it. Now, first thing which we are going to cover today is bug life cycle. Let's talk about bug life cycle. Whenever you get a bug, you give the status to the bug as new. Whenever you, any bug arises. And when you change the status as new, the developer is intimated about the, uh, about the code. Yeah, one more thing I forgot to explain. That is, whenever you get any bug, you cannot immediately raise it as a bug. First, make yourself sure, is it really a bug or not? Review it again. Try to pass a different set of data also to check, to make it 101% sure that yes, it's really a bug. Make yourself sure. If you have any doubt, then you can consult your team members. You can consult your peers. You can consult your peers uh, for the confirmation. If it is confirmed, then you can raise a bug. Still, if there any doubt, what what next? And if you have still a doubt, you are not sure whether it's a bug or not, then you can discuss out with the developer. Still having any doubt, you can consult project manager. Still having any doubt, the last target is the client. The thing is discussed with the client. If the client says that it is a bug, then it is considered as a bug. If not, then it is not considered as a bug. So first thing, when you get a bug, first you need to be 100% sure whether it's a bug, it, it is a bug or not. First, 
make yourself sure. And when it is confirmed that yes, it is a bug, then you can change the status to new. You give the status to the bug as new. And when the developer is intimated about the bug, the developer then approves it, it as a bug. When the developer accepts that yes, it is a bug, he changes the status to open. He changes the status to open. Then based on the severity and priority, he starts correcting the bug. He starts changing his code based on the severity and priority. Don't worry about severity and priority. I am going to discuss that in the later part of the session. Uh, based on that severity and priority, he starts correcting the bugs. Means bugs having high severity and high priority are corrected before then the bugs which are having low severity and low priority. So after new, then he changes the code and he finds that yes, the bug has been fixed. Then he changes the status to refix. And the tester again, that is you are going to be intimated again that yes, I have corrected the bug. Now it is working fine. Please retest it. Now you are going to retest that all the test cases related to the bug fix area are going to be implemented again. Suppose earlier you, uh, there was some problem in the logging functionality. Let's say you were not able to log in into the game. You intimated developer, developer corrected his code and you are asked to retest the functionality. Now you have to implement all the test cases related to the bug fix area. You have to come up with all the test cases again. That is when the situation is. At this time, when you are sure 100% case the bug has been fixed, you can change the status to fix and finally fix. This is the normal flow of the bug life cycle. Now, let's talk about another flow which can arise in the bug life cycle. That is, suppose uh, you get some bug, you change the status to new. So the developer says, no, it is not a bug. Developers don't accept it as a bug. Maybe he is uh, viewing the requirements from different point of view. You are viewing the requirements from different point of view. He can then change the status to reject. And he can come up with plenty of explanation. He can come up with documents to justify that how it is not a bug. And he can change the status to reject and finally close. Another flow that could be another flow could be when you get some bugs, you change the status to new, and some other members of the team has also raised the same bug which you are raising. Some other member of the team has raised the same bug which you are raising, so the developer can change the status to duplicate and then close. He can change the status to duplicate and close because someone else has also raised the same bug. And whenever you are raising any bug using let's say quality thinking, try to check out whether this bug has already been raised or not. But sometimes when there is a big list of bugs, sometimes we don't get to know that whether this bug has really uh, raised, uh, already raised or not. Then if you have raised it again, then developer will change it to duplicate and finally close. After that, Another flow is, you, uh, you get a bug, you change the status to new. After that, the developer uh, uh, says that this is the functionality which client don't want right now. We don't need to correct this bug right now. This is related to the future implementation. Let's say if we have some e-commerce website and the client just want the functionality related to uh, displaying of product only. We don't want the PayPal functionality of the application. And you are coming up with errors related to PayPal that the PayPal is not working. PayPal is not implemented. Then the developer can change the status to default that this is the functionality client don't want right now. This is related to future implementation. He can change the status to default and close. Another situation, last situation which can arise, suppose in the 100 years, now we are 101 uh, percent sure about the internal release and the external release. We have discussed many uh, times in the previous session. If in the internal release, in the release 100, let us say there was some bug. Let's say bug A was there. Bug 1 or bug A was there. Then uh, the developer corrected it. You checked it. You checked the status to fix and you finally closed it. 
and in the next day thousand leaves again same bug is coming up let's say again same bug started coming up now you change the status to new now developer can either change the status to open because it is a bug and he is accepting it as a bug now it's his wish he can change the status to open or he can change the status to view open we have discussed now we are going to talk about view he can change the status to reopen after correcting the error he can change the status to fix after that retest for you retest and when you retest it and you are sure that yes it has been corrected then you can change the status to fix and finally it will be this is another thing. which is the better option is the, uh, open is the better option or reopen is the better option in the uh, company open is considered better because more number of bugs you raise more number of bugs you correct so out of the application more money you get from the client and whenever you are giving the status again and again as a reopening it gives a very bad impact that again and again you are getting the same errors in the application so it is good practice to go for the open bug status Uh, when you getting the same error again, but sometimes the developer can change the status to reopen also. That this bug has arisen again. This is not a new bug. The previous bug has come up again. Can change the status to reopen. Also. So this was the bug life cycle. These are the various cues in the bug life cycle which can come up. Now let's talk about bug reporting and classing. What is bug reporting? Whenever a bug comes up, you have to intimate to the developer about the bug. That is known as bug reporting. How you are going to report the bug to the developer? For that, you create one Excel sheet with a lot of fields in that Excel sheet. What you do? You create an Excel sheet with lot of fields in that Excel sheet. What are those fields which you are going to include in the Excel sheet? They are bug ID. bug description status owner creation date project module release priority priority then developer assignee then we produce the ability environment attachment release process see these very steps are not the mandatory or not the fixed one it depends on organization to organization some uses uh, different uh, items in the uh, excel sheet to report a bug some other company may be using some different so it, it can vary from company to company these items to be included in the bug reporting sheet can vary from company to company so let's talk about the first one that is bug id every bug is given one unique id to suppose if i get some error in the login functionality that with uh, uh, filling up the valid username and password i'm not able to log let's say i'm giving 1001 bug id After that, I'm getting some bug in the forget password. I can give the bug ID thousand two to that. If I'm getting some bug in the compose mail, I can give thousand three bug ID. Every bug is given a unique ID. That is known as bug ID. Description not able to log in. I can say the bug description not able to log in with valid credentials. In Gmail, I'm not able to log in with valid credentials, so I can give the description like this. Status: We have already discussed the status in detail. One out of these three: new, open, retest, fix, close, reject, duplicate, deploy. Whatever the status, depend on the situation, depend on the application. What is the status right now? You are going to you are going to write the status. Here. Generally, in the beginning, the status is new, right? When it reaches developer, it is accepted, open. Then retest, then fix, then close. 
so corresponding status is written here. Honor, if you are using these fields in the quality center to report bus, then the name of the honor is automatically populated and the creation date is automatically populated. Quality center helps you to fill few fields automatically. But if you are using Excel sheet, then you can write here the name of the honor who has who is raising this bus. That is the name of the tester, your name if you are raising that bus. Creation date, on which date you are raising this bus. Name of the project, you can give us which module, let's say the bus is in login module. Which release, let's say in release 300 this bus is coming. Severity and priority, a team for the time being, I am not explaining severity and priority, this is the next topic in our session. Then I am going to explain severity and priority in very detail. Developer assigning, which, who, uh, who is the developer who is taking care of this um, project or this module, the name of the developer is given here. In quality center it is aut uh, automatically popular. Reproducible, how often the bug is coming, how often the bug is arising in the application, that is reproducible. Here you can write down yes, no, often, always, very rare, less than 10%, less than 20%, these various things you can write. How often the bug is coming up? Environment, in which environment this bug is coming up? Environment here means in which operating system this error is coming up. In Windows Vista, Windows 7, Windows XP, in which operating system the error is coming up? In which database? DB2, Oracle, Sybase, various databases. In which database this error is coming up? Operating system, national browser. In which browser you are getting this error? IE, Mozilla, Safari, Firefox, various browsers are available. In which browser this is coming? Environment here means we are going to test the application for these things, three things. In which operating system, in which database, in which browser the error is coming up. Attachment. To tell the developer, uh, to, uh, to clearly explain the developer that which uh, error you are talking about, then you can attach the screen uh, shot of that bug. When the bug is coming up, some error is coming up, you can use print screen or some other uh, software to take the screenshot of the screen and you can attach that here in the attachment. The screenshot can be attached here. So that there is uh, no kind of conflict uh, arises between the developer and tester that what is the bug all about. To make the developer very clear about the bug, the screenshot can be attached here. Last is repro steps. Repro steps are the steps which, are, which you need to follow to get that bug. Suppose the error is not coming up every time. Suppose that error is coming for some situation, for some conditions that error is coming up, for some a particular set of data that error is coming up. In that situation, you can write down the various steps which you want the developer to follow to see that error. Right? Suppose I am not able to log in into the Gmail. What are the repro steps I am going to uh, write down? Navigate to uh, gmail.com, enter valid username, in bracket I can write down the username in which I enter. Third tip, valid, uh, enter valid password, in bracket which password I use, then click on sign up. Since by following these four steps, this username and password, I am getting this error. This is a valid username and password, still I am not able to log in into that. That is three pro steps we can write down, the steps in detail, all the steps we can write for the developer. But these are the steps we need to follow to get that error on the screen. Whenever uh, the developer is not clear about the uh, 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 error, he can consult you, he can chat with you, he can talk to you on communicator, he can write down in the comment fields in the quality center, he can send you an email. The best way out to communicate is quality center. This is as per my experience, the best way out to use quality center for communication, uh, to write the comments in the comment field. So these are the various fields you include in the bug reporting sheet when you have to report the bug to the developer. So till now what we have covered, bug reporting and tracking, we know what is a bug, we know what is regression testing, we know when bugs arise, when the actual output not equal to the expected output, then it means there is a bug. 
then bug life cycle five situation five different flows we have uh, studied after that we talked about the bug reporting sheet that when the bug arises how you are going to report that bug to the developer the uh, excel sheet you can create or you can use quality sheet what are the fields you are going to fill up for the developer to intimate him about the bug now the last thing is priority and priority priority is intensity that is the impact the error is having on the application priority is important priority is important priority is is with respect to priority is with respect to tester and priority is with respect to developer priority is how much intense the error is how much effective the uh, error is if the error is very intense that you cannot proceed with your testing activity it is so critical error you cannot go ahead that it means it is of very high priority it is of it is a high priority bug if that error is not affecting my testing activity i can proceed i can test other things also in that then it is of low priority and what is priority that is the importance how much important it is it has to be done right now or it can be done later on if it has to be done right now then the priority is high if it can be done later on then it means the priority is high now we are going to talk about some real time scenarios related to priority and priority this is very important concept from the interview point of view whenever you clear in the interview try to come up with some project where you have come up with Come up with the different combinations for this priority and priority. Let's talk about few examples of this. First situation: high priority, high priority, high priority and high priority. This is suppose the URL is not working. Suppose the URL is not working. How can you come up with testing your activity? You cannot test the application. Suppose uh, you are some, given some internal leads and the address you are given like this: one nine two point one three four point two point six seven slash project slash index dot html. Let's say this address you got, and you are asked that the application is placed on this address, and you have to test and you are not able to launch the application you are not able to view the application url is not working url is incorrect then this is a very severe bug you cannot proceed with your testing activity so the here the priority is high and priority is high it has to be done right now you cannot proceed with your testing activity that is high priority and high priority if we talk about gmail let us suppose you are not able to log in with the valid credential you are not able to log in So it means it is of high priority and high priority because you cannot proceed with your testing activity. You cannot move ahead. You cannot test the other functionalities, some post mail, send mail, draft, trash. You cannot test anything because you are not able to log in into the application. So it is high priority, high priority. Login not working. You are not working. So these are bugs related to high priority and high priority. Next is low priority, high priority. Low priority, high priority. In this, the application, the error is not at all impacted. It is not at all uh, affecting your testing activities. You can do your testing activities easily, but the error is of high importance. It has to be done right now. You can do your testing activities, but it has to be done right now. Let's say password not encrypted. Let's say password not encrypted. What happens if the passwords are not encrypted? Passwords are not encrypted. Other people are also uh, able to view your password. Is it a good thing? No. Nobody wants to share his or her password with others. 
So in that case, it is not affecting my testing activity. I can test other uh, other things in the application. It is not affecting me. But it is a high priority. Nobody wants to share this password with others. So it has to be done right now. When there is such kind of situation where it is not affecting the tester, but it has to be done right now, those all such scenarios come under low security and high priority, like password not encrypted. Forget password not working. Forget password not working. Here, it is not affecting your testing activities. You can test other things, but if the for, uh, uh, customer clicks on this forget password link, he is not able to retrieve, then it is not a good option. It has to be done right now. One more uh, real-time uh, scenario here comes up. Logo not correct. Let's say logo not correct. It is of low severity, not impacting my activity, but high severity because it is going to give very bad impact to the client if the logo is not there. Or the name of the company is misspelled. Then it is, again, it is a low severity, high priority part. One more example, suppose you go to ATM machine. You go to ATM, you insert your card, you enter uh, the amount to be withdrawn, let's say 10,000 rupees you want to withdraw. And you get your card back, but you don't get any money and you don't get any message on the screen that uh, password not correct and you cannot, uh, we cannot, uh, your uh, request cannot be proceed or any, so no message is coming in. What you will do in that case? You will try to call customer care. You will try to call customer care in that situation. Uh, customer care is going to check the things and tell you that whether the money was withdrawn or not. In such situations where, in such situations, let, let us suppose no money was withdrawn. It means the functionality is working fine. When no money was withdrawn, functionality is perfectly fine, but the customer should be intimated about it. It means customer should be intimated about it. It means it is not affecting my testing activities. The functionality is working fine, but it is a high priority because if such kind of situation arises, the customer should be intimated. There should be some error messages played on the screen. Otherwise, it's going to create a bad impact. Maybe people can stop using it in such kind of uh, situations arises, or it is going to create trouble for the client. He has to call the customer care. They should be intimated. Some user-friendly error message should be displayed on this. That is low severity, high priority. After that, let's say in Gmail, uh, let's say auto save is not working. Whenever we uh, write some pay, uh, mail, it gets auto save. Let's say auto save is not working. It is of low severity, not impacting the activities of the tester, but high priority. It should be done. It should be done right. In high severity and low priority. What is this? It means the error is so impressive, the error is so intense, but I have the alternative, the developer can do it later on. It's not mandatory that he has to do it right now, he can do it later on. Such kind of scenarios come under high severity and low priority. In this, we can say high severity, low priority, let's say, uh, in my notepad, here in my notepad, I I, I want to save uh, this notepad. I go to this file menu and I click on save. Let's say this save is not working. What I can do? I can use Control plus S to save. Means it is impacting my activities, but I have the alternative, so it can be done later on. When the error is intense, but due to alternatives, you are using some other way to proceed with your testing activities, then at that time it is of high severity, low priority, that it can be done later on. It is not at high priority, it can be done as the developer gets done. That is high severity, high priority, but last is low severity, low priority. Low severity, low priority. All the user interface related errors comes under this in, uh, category, low priority, low priority. The, if the application is not fulfilling or obeying any Microsoft fix rules, this Microsoft fix rules we have already discussed in the previous section, that is control is not well defined, control is not providing complete description, control should not be grabbed, truncated or overlapped, 
image gap, selling checking, system end. If your application is not fulfilling any of these six rules, Microsoft six rules, it comes under low severity and low priority. It is not affecting the activities of the tester and they are not so intense and they they are not having the priority high. They can be done later on as the developer gets time, he can do it as uh, per his comfortability he can do it as he gets the time. That is low severity, low priority. Other you can see related errors like W3C standard. Uh, if the application is not following worldwide web consortium standards, if the application is not fulfilling, all these errors related to user interface, related to font size, excuse <coughs> me, related to font size, font color, uh, all these things come under low severity and low priority. So these were the four situations or the real time scenarios for the different combinations of the severity and priority. High severity, high priority, low severity, high priority, high severity, low priority, low severity, low priority. So it was all about this uh, bug, bug reporting and tracking. What is bug tracking? We forgot to explain bug tracking. Whatever the communication takes place between the tester and the developer right from the status new to the status closed. Whatever the communication takes place between these two people, between the tester and the developer, from the status new when the bug has arrived to the status closed when the tester has actually closed the bug. This whole communication is known as bug tracking. This whole communication is known as bug tracking. Okay, all right, team. It's all for today. This was all about bug reporting and tracking. All right. Thanks for your time.